Stability Equilibria. We're now going to look at equilibria involving aqueous solutions of ionic salts which are not soluble in water. If we looked at the solubility rules, these salts would be deemed insoluble. For example, in a saturated solution of barium sulfate, we have this equilibrium established. Now barium sulfate, if we go back to the solubility rules, is a solid, but it will break apart to a small extent in water into these ions, Ba plus two and SO4 minus two. We can write a K expression for this reaction. The concentration of a solid is fixed. The concentration of a solid does not change. And so we're gonna get rid of the solid and call this Ksp, which is simply the product of the ions, barium times sulfate. So Ksp is called the solubility product constant. The Ksp expression is the product of the concentrations of the ions produced, each raised to the power that corresponds to the number of ions. For example, calcium fluoride, another insoluble solid. If I want to write the Ksp expression for this reaction, I would take calcium ions multiplied by fluoride ions squared because of the coefficient of two in front of F. If you know the solubility, you can calculate the Ksp. Let's look at this example here. The solubility of barium sulfate is given. Calculate Ksp for barium sulfates. Well, first of all, the solubility needs to be in molarity. We're in grams per liter, so let's change that. Need the molar mass to get back to Molarity, molar mass of barium sulfate is 233. So my concentration in molarity is 1.06 times 10 to the negative five molar. We wanna calculate Ksp for barium sulfate. So here's my equation, barium sulfate breaks apart to a small extent into these ions. If the solubility of barium sulfate is 1.06 times 10 to the negative fifth, because the coefficients are one to one to one, the solubilities of both ions are also 1.06 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if I want to calculate Ksp, Ksp is equal to the product of the ions, barium times sulfate. And I know the concentrations of barium and sulfate ions. And so it's simply 1.06 times 10 to the negative fifth squared. And so Ksp for barium sulfate, 1.12 times 10 to the negative tenth. And no units are associated with Ksp. If I know the Ksp, I can calculate the solubility. Let's look at this example. We have silver chromate as the insoluble solid. So we're going to write an equation. So we're gonna start off with my solid. In equilibrium with its ions, there are two silver ions and one chromate ion. We're gonna let S be the solubility. So S is the solubility of the solid the solubility of silver is actually gonna be 2S, while the solubility of chromate is S. So Ksp is gonna be equal to the concentration of silver ions 
squared, because of the coefficient, multiplied by chromate. We know the value for Ksp, it's 2.4 times 10 to the negative 12. Plug in the values that we have, silver is 2s, that's squared. Chromate is just s. Now 2s squared is actually 4s squared times another s is 4s cubed. So s, which is the solubility, of the solid comes out to a value of 8.4 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. So here's a comparison of the two solids, barium sulfate and silver chromate. Silver chromate has a higher solubility, but it has a lower KSP value, 2.4 times 10 to the negative 12. Normally, the higher the KSP value, the more a substance dissolves. So the higher the KSP, the more ions you get in solution. Common ion effect. We looked at common ion effect with acids and bases, and the common ion effect lowered the solubility. Same thing applies here because according to Le Chatelier's principle, the ions that are produced are going to decrease the solubility. Let's look at an example again with silver chromate. We're adding a common ion potassium chromate to this solution so my equation is still silver chromate solid breaking it apart into its ions From silver chromate, we get the values of 2s and s like we did in the previous problem. However, we're adding potassium chromate, which is going to add a common ion. In this case, the common ion is chromate, and it's 0.1 molar for chromate. So 0.1 goes over here. At equilibrium, we have 2s for silver and chromate is going to be 0.1 plus s. I want to calculate the solubility. I want to calculate s. Well I know Ksp is equal to the concentration of silver ions squared times chromate. And we know the Ksp value is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 12th. So 2.4 10 to the negative 12th is equal to silver, which is 2s squared, times chromate, which is 0.1 plus s. Now we can assume s is negligible compared to 0.1, so we can rewrite this. 2.4 10 to the negative 12th is equal to 4s squared times 0.1. s is going to be very small compared to 0.1. It's negligible, and we can solve for s this way. And the solubility, when we add the common ion, comes out to 2.4 10 to the negative sixth molar. So this is the solubility with the common ion chromate. The solubility in pure water was 8.4 10 to the negative fifth. So the solubility when we add a common ion decreases according to Le Chatelier's principle. The salt effect. Ions that are different from those involved in the solubility equilibrium, which are called uncommon ions, can have some effect on the solubility, but the presence of uncommon ions tends to increase rather than decrease solubility. And this has to do with interionic attractions, but we're not going to solve any problems with the salt effect. So if we have an uncommon ion in solution, we're not going to worry about the mathematics involved when we get to those problems. Just know that when you add an uncommon ion, it tends to increase solubility rather than decrease. And in each of the calculations performed so far, 
we've assumed that all of the dissolved solute appears in solution as separated ions. For example, if we have a solution of magnesium fluoride, we've assumed that it completely separates into magnesium ions and fluoride ions. But what can happen is since magnesium ions are positive and fluoride are negative, they can combine into what are called ion pairs. It is possible, but for our purposes, we're going to assume that ionization is complete. So we will continue to write equations like this.